Joining us right now is Jeffrey Dickens, a contributing editor to Newsbusters. Jeffrey, great to have you with us. Thanks for having me on. All right, first, let's talk, out, uh, talk about something you're reporting here. From June 8th all the way to June 15th, the network news uh, stations have run a total of 133 border crisis stories on their evening and morning news shows, but they failed to include critical aspects of the story. What aspects are you talking about? Well, yes, we look at, looked at all the border crisis stories from uh, June 8th through July 15th, and uh, we found that there are some serious, uh, dangerous stories that the big three networks, ABC, CBS, and NBC, uh, have not told their viewers about. As you pointed out, they are focusing on the humanitarian uh, issues, and we're seeing you know, the, these programs full of uh, sympathetic photos of children to be cared for. But what you're not hearing and not seeing is uh, you know, ish concerns about uh, gang members and terrorists f coming across the border in, within this influx of unaccompanied minors. We're also not hearing about uh, border patrol agents being infected. Uh, in fact, the, the issue of disease has only been brought up in a total of four stories. Uh, Good Morning America just ran a piece this morning on it about uh, swine flu and pneumonia show showing up. Also, uh, what's really startling is uh, you have a case of the HHS uh, putting restrictions on the media. All right, yeah, yes. let's, let's talk about that. I want to go into some details on these rules that HHS is attaching to anyone who wants to do a media tour of one of the immigration or detention facilities. The rules, according to the HHS, were created to protect the safety and privacy of children. No recording devices are allowed, no questions are to be asked. The media are not allowed to interact with any children or staff members among some of the other restrictions out there. Um, and also, y you see the questions need to be directed to a D, uh, uh, HHS spokesperson, Kenneth Wolf. there. This is somewhat unusual, wouldn't you say, in terms of giving the media access to something that taxpayers are funding? Well, yeah, it's just pretty staggering. Uh, I, I, you know, I made the point in the piece uh, that your viewers can see on newsbusters.org uh, that if, can you imagine that during the George W. Bush administration, if the government had put restrictions on media members on talking to uh, Hurricane Katrina victims, they would be outraged. They would be, you know, screaming to high heavens about censorship. But so far on ABC, NBC, or CBS, they haven't raised a stink about this. And, you know, Jeff, I, I don't want to play the victim too much here because we do want to remind people that if they're not happy with the coverage that they are receiving on ABC, NBC, MSNBC, so forth and so on, they're always welcome here on Newsmax. But also there's another uh, network out there that has a different take on this. And you would say, though, today it's not necessarily the same case as 1996. There are outlets that are reporting the entire story. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and the reason we focus here at the MRC on those big three networks is uh, they still have the highest ratings, and they still cater to what we call the low information voters. And the fact of the matter is that they do have influence on public policy. You know, the, all those eyeballs watching those shows, you know, this is the this is the message that they're getting across, and so that's why we're focused on, again, we call them the big three. But you're right. Uh, in this new media la landscape of uh, not just cable news outlets, but also the internet. Uh, there, are, you know, the information is getting out there. Uh, but uh, again, we just want to point out that ABC, and CBS, and NBC, especially during the Obama administration, have been basically carrying the administration's water on a lot of things and really refusing to report the stories that are damaging to the administration. And, and that's interesting because I want to talk about that a little bit more. You bring up the Obama administration here and the fact that the media is carrying the water for him. But at the same time, we just heard Jill Abrams, the former executive editor of the New York Times, saying, in fact. This administration, despite claims of being the most transparent in history, in Abrams' mind, has been the most difficult to work with for the White House press corps, or even her, communicating with members of the president's national security team. What was your take on Abrams' comments? Right. You know, it is interesting. You do get a few honest uh, uh, reporters sort of speaking truth to power. Um, but you hear these comments, you know, these comments will show up uh, in, in a print outlet or maybe in an interview. but. You don't see it when it comes to sort of their flagship uh, uh, stations, uh, at least in their 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 their, their main uh, broadcast outlets, like an NBC Nightly News or a Good, Good Morning America. So yeah, while there might be some sort of uh, uh, bickering behind the scenes, they don't let it get on the airwaves. 
Yeah, and it's also to, to, to bring this up in lieu of what you are in, in light of what you said about the Bush administration, because during those eight years of George H or George W. Bush, he received so much criticism for not being open, not being uh, not working with the media. And here we have a former executive editor of The New York Times saying that President Obama, in fact, much worse than President Bush. Right. Indeed. It's, it, it, it is startling. You would think that uh if, if again, if this was the, the Bush administration and you had uh, sort of a similar situation, it would it would be all over the place. But you're, you know, you're not seeing Abrams quote everywhere. Oh yeah, and we'll try to get it out there because uh, certainly something you hear when you listen to members of the White House press corps talk off the record about covering this particular off the uh, record is key. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, ironically enough uh, the conversations yeah. that they have very difficult to deal with this White House. But Jeff, thanks so much for being with us and thanks for all you guys do there from Reston, Virginia with Newsbusters. Great. Thanks for having me on. All right. Our pleasure. Uh, and quickly, guys, if we can, I want to mention that we're following a story. We're going to have Miranda Khan join us in just a few moments, but we're keeping our eyes on a developing story right now to Russia. Apparently, a Malaysian, Air, uh, Malaysian Airlines plane has been shot down. Uh, some are reporting that it might be from a surface-to-air missile. Clearly, uh, a point of uh, something we want to follow here based on the president uh, putting new sanctions in place against Russia and the current crisis that we've seen play out in the last few months between Ukraine and Russia. Much more ahead on that issue, developing news, a Malaysian airliner uh, shot down over the Russian-Ukraine border. We'll have more on that coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with us. We'll be right back at the other side of this commercial break with more details on that developing story.